So the way that stem cells are involved is that the gut is one of the organs of the body where the cells divide the most rapidly. So it, um, it regenerates itself every two to four days normally. So within the intestine, the intestine has its own stem cells. Now these obviously, when a piece of gut has been removed, we don't have those stem cells anymore. So somehow we need to replace not only those stem cells of the gut, but also all the other cell types of, of the gut um, in a way that's going to uh, allow them to divide and generate potentially a quite long length piece of gut. Stem cells have allowed us for the first time to be able to uh, uh, study uh, cells within the laboratory as well. So for example, if we discover a particular stem cells, like in my research we work with nerve stem cells, but now it actually allows us to take those nerve stem cells to actually regrow nerves within the a, a laboratory setting and then understand their behavior, um, how they get modified, how they, they actually generate cells and how those cells interact with other uh, cell systems. We are at a point where we can take these stem cells, uh, take stem cells of a whole variety of, uh, of cell types and this is what the INTENS project is about and see what happens when you bring them together, all right? How do you encourage their connections? How do they form a very organized uh, system? And I think the whole study of uh, stem cells and, and regenerative medicine in the wider context has really been about our ability to now understand how the body comes to be. How does it actually uh, maintain itself? How does it develop itself? And stem cells really allowed us to, to be able to do that. The real future uh, um, option is to use these more potent cells, these uh, induced pluripotent stem cells that derive from the skin of the individual, and we can put them back uh, to really a pluripotent status, and then make testing from them. This is really uh, the option for the future, because these cells can be expanded forever, so there's no limit to what we can do. And they can differentiate in all different tissues, so we can make from them muscle, nerves, epithelial cells of the intestine, and therefore we can imagine that we can take a cells from this particular individual that needs an intestine, and then using the technology that is available now, but of course, this is getting better and better, we can make a proper intestine for those individuals. Now, to that, there's still several limitations. The most important one is that these cells are so potent that if we don't control them very well, they can form tumors. Because they are so potent that they are, uh, uh, th their way of proliferating and differentiating different tissues sometimes cannot be controlled. So we need to be sure, of course, that before transplanting any of these cells to any individual, we are able to control them very carefully and make sure that they reach fully differentiation. So they are fully committed, so they will not go anywhere else. But this is not what we can do at the moment yet. The other thing is that, of course, they are so plastic and so potent that to make them really doing the thing that we want may be challenging. So they can, what we know, for example, now is that some of these cells can reach a functionality that is typical of a fetus or a newborn, but cannot mature to form cells that are typical of us as adult individual. So that's another big challenge that we have to overcome. So safety is the first, and then efficiency is the other one that we need to come. And we hope that thanks to this study, we will be able to address uh, these problems.